What's up guys, Chocolate Milk here, and today we're going to be going through the Eater of Worlds raid layer, and at the end I'm going to show you the new raid mods and the new raid ghost shell. If you like this video, a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below, let me know what you think about the raid layer, about the video, about the raid mods, about really anything at all. You know, I love communication, and if you enjoyed the video and other videos on my channel, feel free to subscribe. But let's go through the video. So basically you're gonna run for the door and you're gonna run, 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 you know, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, you're the gingerbread man. And you're gonna run through this little tube here and it's gonna take you through like these engine turbines, which are pretty cool actually. I really enjoy the environment of the raid layer. I really like the whole aesthetics. You're gonna kind of glide through these piston things um, and then you're just gonna drop. And you know, I have to warn you, there are quite a few drops like this. So be careful for this raid. You're gonna run up to the door, the door is gonna open, and then you're going to come up to the first part of the actual raid, which is the jumping puzzle. Now, essentially, the way to get through this jumping puzzle is to basically follow the leader. It's going to be one after another. One person's going to jump on a plate, and another person's going to follow. Just like so. You just keep on cruising all the way through. Now, there are towers located all around, as you can see the pipes and stuff. Up on top, scions will spawn and someone's gonna have to deal with them. Now, I recommend the people at the back of the line deal with the Scions. You know, I, I like to go first just to get it done, get it out of the way, and just take them all out. Now, once you get to the last platform, you're gonna see a little icon will show up at the bottom, and they will say, reactor temperature rises. Now, basically what that means is, you did it, you made it to the end, and all of the platforms will lock. They're gonna drop first, but they're gonna lock in place. So if you die, like I did, just wait a second and they'll all lock in place just like so. And basically you really only need three people to make it to each platform before the reactor temperature will rise. So now for the second part of the jumping puzzle, it splits you up into two groups of three. One team going to the right and another team going to the left. So I recommend splitting it up pretty much as soon as you get there. Maybe have one, two, and three go right and you know, four, five, and six go left. Really, whatever way you wanna do it. I don't think there's any one specific way to really do any of the raids. Just kind of make it work in any way, shape, or form, and just get it done, you know what I mean? But yeah, be careful of those Scions up there. Clearly, they will take you out. Now with my Titan right here, I, I like equipping the Lion Rampart boots because then I can just kind of glide my way over through most of this whole jumping puzzle. For this next part, you're going to follow the leader the whole way through, except for I believe once you get to the fifth and sixth person. Right at this next one, on the left, the fifth and sixth guys are gonna have to start jumping and going over to the left. Now here I'm taking out these ads right here because they can be pretty pesky. So as you can see, the fifth and sixth guys are over there now leading the way. After that, it just becomes another fall of the leader. And as soon as the reactor temperature rises, you're good to go. But I can't tell you how much I love those Lion Rampart boots. I just glide my way through everything. And then this next one, it's a little tricky again. There's one part where you kind of have to have, not necessarily have to have done it before, but it's a little bit easier when you do it with someone who has done it before so they can at least tell you what's going on. So I'm the leader, I jumped all the way across over to that one. Now, the way we did it here was we had the second person jump to the middle, but a lot of people like to do it, just follow the leader, jump to the plate that the person in front of you is on. You can do it either way, like I said, whatever works. You know, as long as you get it done, it's totally fine. And pretty much once you get up to this spot, it's really just kind of coasting. As you can see, the reactor temperature rose again, and now we are at the second part of the raid, which is basically ad phase. You're just gonna basically sit here and defend. I recommend three people on the right side, three people on the left side, and it's just take out waves of ads. I wanna say it's three or four different waves. You're gonna have a couple centurions. You're gonna have some of those blade wielding cabal. It's gonna be quite a few of, of each of them, really. So you just basically sit here, take out each one of the waves, 
and just keep on going until you will hear Callus tell his defenses to hold off on attacking you and basically grant you passage to the next part of the raid and you will also see a chest appear. And there he is. Halt your attack, loyalists. Good old Callus. He's always got our back, right? And there's the chest that I was telling you about. I got a couple couple coins, a couple shaders there. But I also got a legendary engram. Then you're going to run for a little bit. And you're going to come up to the next sort of puzzle type spot. I like to call it a running puzzle. So basically, you're, you're going to run. Now, you can get to two at a time. But you're going to run. And you're going to try and hide behind these little barrier things. And if you don't, you're going to get killed. If two at a time isn't working for you, just run one at a time and you'll make your way through. Just be patient. Then you're going to once again jump and just dive on down. Be careful because it's quite a drop. Then this next spot, this is probably one of the coolest spots of the whole raid lair. A lot of people like to call it the golden eye barrel just because it kind of looks like the golden eye gun barrel. And you basically get dropped. Now, as you're falling here, you can see that among the rubble, there are these rings. Now there are six rings in total. After passing through all six, there's gonna be a chest that appears down at the bottom. Now once again, be careful because it is a long drop. I had to go back a second time to go grab some other rings and there it is, Callus grants a gift down there in the left hand corner. As you will see right over there, there is the chest. After the chest, you're going to run, you're going to jump over these little asteroid things. I thought this part was pretty cool. It's also very treacherous, so be careful. And yeah, just kind of hop your way through all the way on over to the boss. And this is where you're going to meet Argos, the Nessus Mind. Now, in the first phase of the Argos fight, you're going to have one person at each one of the plates, whether you have Arc, Solar, and Void. Here, I'm running for the Solar Plate. So one person is going to stay and defend, while another person is going to run and charge these craniums or skulls that you need in order to shoot at various different crystals on Argos' shield. Solar shoots Solar, Arc shoots Arc, and Void shoots Void. Now, you're going to have the Defender is going to call out I need two arc, one solar on solar plate. I need you know, two void, one arc on void plate, you know, whatever the combination is. It can be anything on any plate, really. One cranium will take out one and a half crystals, as you can see right here. There's one, and I should be able to take down about half of that one's health as well. Make sure to use all of your cranium, otherwise the craniums will not respawn. So if you're not going to keep shooting it, just shoot adds. After you finish that, you're going to get another chest. I got some more tokens. Yay! And then you move on to the next part of the phase, which is Argos, the actual boss fight. He wakes up from his slumber, he sleeps like a sloth. Pretty interesting guy, right? Now for this phase, it's very similar. You're going to have defenders and you're going to have runners. The defenders in this part are going to go to one plate and they're each going to take a cranium and they're going to take it and just charge it at your main defending plate. At this plate here, I was defending for arc. You're going to then take one of each of the craniums that you needed, which I believe we needed arc, two arc and, and a solar, and you're going to shoot these orbs down and you're going to kind of push them to the middle. You're going to break open a shield. The shield's going to explode and there you go. 
Now, after you take down his shield, there's a quick little damage phase. Be careful, he will shoot out nets like you saw, and you have to have those nets shot, otherwise you're gonna get tossed up in the air and you will die. After that happens, you're gonna end up in the plate phase where you're gonna go and you're gonna jump on these plates or platforms and you're gonna try and shoot his head, arms, and back. He's got two spots on his left, two spots on his right side, and two spots on his back. Now, after you take down both of those sides, I highly recommend you shoot out the cannons as well because Argos will do damage to you. Basically do this as many times as you need in the damage phase. Try and cook as many craniums as possible because they do a lot of damage. You know, if you're a Titan, you know, drop down your barricade. I recommend hammers, but really, you know, whatever you want to do, you know, in order to do as much damage as possible. Now, once you do enough damage, you're going to get a cool little symbol there that says Enrage is near, and you're going to try and do as much damage as possible. And that's really your last chance to kill him. You can use Cold Heart. I heard today that Hard Light was very good, Cluster Bomb Rockets, and then as soon as you kill him, he's going to blow up and good things happen. You just finished the raid layer. Congratulations. In this specific run, I had helped a friend of mine finish his very first raid, so I was quite happy after many tries of trying to get him through the Leviathan and Eater of Worlds, we had finally gotten it done. After that, you get kind of carried away in a rush of fire and flame back to the Leviathan where you just go and pick up more loot, which I thought that was that was pretty interesting. I was expecting a different a different loot spot, but hey, you know, it is what it is. That's the raid lair, pretty much in a nutshell. There are multiple different ways to do it, but that's the way that I recommend. If you find a new way, let me know. I would love to try a different way. So now, onto the raid mods. There's the full set of Titan raid armor there. Let's go over the helmet. Now, the raid mod for the helmet is Radiant Largess. It's while activating your super on the Leviathan, it automatically recharges your grenade, whether that's for your solar, arc, or void supers. Now for the arms, the arms mod. You have while in Leviathan, your melee kills increase all damage by 20%. Melee kills reduce incoming damage by 20%. And while in Leviathan, your melee kills have a chance to make enemies drop more power ammo. All three are pretty good, if you ask me. Now for the chest armor. While on Leviathan, using power weapons to defeat challenging enemies will boost your power weapon damage by 15% for a short time. Pretty good for the dog's part in the Leviathan raid. Now for the boots. While on Leviathan, using energy weapons to defeat normal enemies will boost your energy weapon damage by 15% for a short time. I really like that one. And the class item, basically on the Leviathan, your solar abilities deal 25% more damage. There's one for arc, like I said, solar, and void altogether. All pretty good, very powerful. Um, I can definitely let you know that I felt a lot more powerful in comparison to previous runs. Now for the ghost shell. That's the generic skin. It's got Seeker of Glory, which tracks the number of encounters in the Leviathan you have completed. Seeker of Brilliance, which in addition to normal rewards on the Leviathan can also reward you a bright engram. And Seeker of Opulence, exotic drops from encounters on the Leviathan have 50% chance of being an exotic not already in your collection. So yeah, I really like that Go Shell, and I hope you all enjoyed this video. As always, drink more chocolate milk. Take care, everybody.